now we're going to move on to our next session, uh, which is Rethinking Employment Supports. And Crystal Bell, you're up again. Thank you, Steve. So um, this is going to be a little bit more interactive than our last one. So you're going to get to know your neighbors a little bit better with this one, which is always fun. You guys like that, right? Um, I'm the nice one. Shelly um, would make you guys move and sit with somebody that you didn't know. So I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that to you. So um, real quick, I just throw these up here kind of to remind everybody what we talked about this morning. Um, considering the all, the person within the context of the family, the family is defined by the individual. The family impacts the individual, the different life stages and how they impact each other, and the family life cycle, the reciprocal roles of the family member, and um, the role that both the person with the diagnosis and the family um, play, supporting the siblings, and a vision for a good life. and. Um, if you were in the breakout, you guys did this, but we're going to um, talk a little bit more um, about this again. So we'll come back to that. Um, our life domains. And then we're gonna focus on um, this integrated support star. So um, we're gonna really dig into resources. And I know that um, Steve talked about a lot of our um, resources up there that are um, about, uh, on that back wall. Um, that you guys have available to you. Um, while I'm talking about the star, I want you to think about where those resources are going to fit in this star, okay? Um, if you've seen Life Course before, don't answer. If you've not seen Life Course before, does anyone know where those uh, supports across the back wall fit in this star. Personal strengths and assets, relationship, technology, community-based, or eligibility. Does anybody know? All right, if you haven't seen Life Course before, as soon as you know, raise your hand. Yes. Eligibility. So when it's over, you get a star pad, okay? This pad has the Charting the Life Course star on it. Um, as we talk about it, you're going to see the value in having this uh, sitting beside you reminding you about the star. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about um, the different parts of the star. So let's talk about personal strengths and assets. So for personal strengths and assets, you're going to think about what either you, the person you're planning, or the family that you're planning, the group that you're planning for, um, what are the um, strengths and assets of that group, that person? What do they bring to the table? What resources do they have? Um, what are their personal strengths as far as character um, traits that they have? That can accompany a lot of different things. Um, technology, that's pretty self-explanatory for that category. Those are things that um, they can go as complex as iPads, um, communication devices, all the way down to as simple as an electric toothbrush. Okay, that's technology. Relationships, obviously family, friends, uh, neighbors, coworkers, those are relationships you have in your life. Um, again, the community-based services. When you do this, you need to remember it's services that anyone in the community can use, um, not um, services, like paid services that are, take place in the community, okay? Um, and then eligibility supports. Eligibility supports are anything that you have to qualify for. So when you're thinking, when we're doing this activity, and you're thinking along eligibility support lines, you need to think about anything that you have to fill out an application for, okay? Because you have to qualify for it. So there has been um, groups that have said, like groups of students that have said, Pell Grants are eligibility specific. 
You're going to think about things like food stamps. You're going to think about things like all of the things that are on um, the black back wall back there, you have to qualify to receive. So that's eligibility. Um, special education is eligibility specific. So those are the things that are going to go in there. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is um, a form of mapping. So you guys are actually going to do some exercises that will help you get comfortable with using um, the star. On your tables um, is an 11 by 17 uh, star. So it looks like this. And one person at your table is going to be the um, secretary, scribe. Um, and as a group, what I want you to do is I want you to think about your um, morning routine. This half of the room, I want you to think about your morning routine, okay? This half of the room, I want you to think about your evening routine. Now, morning routine is going to be from the time you open your eyes until you get to work. Evening routine is going to be from the time you get off work until the time you go to bed. Okay? Well, for me, that's really short, so um, I go to bed early. Um, so you're going to think about that. As a group, at your table, you are going to think about the resources that you use during that period of time. So discuss that as a group, and then one person um, can record some of the answers and the appropriate, um, the appropriate category. So go ahead. Okay, we're going to start with the morning side. So um, when you very first open your eyes, somebody tell me um, what is the first resource that you use? Just holler. You can holler it out. Cell phone. I heard cell phone. An alarm clock. Okay, so cell phone and alarm clock. What category does that go in? Technology. Okay. Um, after you open your eyes and hit snooze 12 times, right? Um, what do you do then? Go get coffee. A shower. Okay. We're going to go with coffee and shower, okay? You're going to go get coffee. How do you get your coffee? A coffee maker, okay? What is a coffee maker? Technology. Now, if you have the ability to program that coffee maker the night before, first of all, power to you. But what is that? A personal strength and asset. I can't do it. OK? Now, <laughs> I am unwilling to learn. How about that? Um, okay, so taking a shower, okay, taking a shower. Can anybody think about the, that shower experience? What would be um, some resources that happen throughout that shower experience? Okay, hot water, what would that go in? That could be, and here's where it's important to, to think about this, you could say it's a community resource, right? But you have to pay for it, okay? If you had the money to pay for it, it would be what? An asset, a personal strength, an asset. So here brings up a situation that it isn't always cut and dried, right? It's not. So some people get very stuck on, well, it goes in this category. No, it goes in this category. It's not always very, it's not always cut and dry. So what's important is that you kind of get close, okay? Because you're going to see here what's going to happen if you're putting all of them in one. Okay, so we got coffee, we have a shower, what else? What was the other one? A toaster, what is a toaster? 
What's a toaster? Technology. Technology. I had uh, getting dressed. What's that? Personal strength. All right. Let's just say you go to your coffee pot and it's broken. What do you do? <laughs> Scream and cuss and break all your uh, coffee mugs. Um, okay. I heard Starbucks, microwave. Okay, what would a microwave be? Technology. What would Starbucks be? Community-based. Anyone can go into Starbucks, but that's a resource. That's how you get your coffee, okay? Um, after you have your coffee, after you've gotten dressed, what, what do you do then? Drive to work. Okay, I heard drive to work. What is your what is your car? Technology. Technology. What is your driver's license? Personal strength and asset, right? Um, say you go out to your car and it doesn't work. It's not you can't get it started. Okay. What do you do? You can walk. Okay. Call your mom. What is your mom? Relationship. Okay. Say your mom sees your number on the phone and goes, oh, no, her again, and puts it down, doesn't answer, right? Okay? Then what do you do? Okay, a tow, a tow truck or AAA. What, is, what would AAA be? Community-based. You do have to pay for it, but it's community-based because anybody can join AAA, right? Whereas AARP is a what? Eligibility, because you have to be able to. I always get the A's mixed up. Okay, so you called um, AARP or um, AAA. See, I told you I always get them mixed up. You called AAA, and AAA says your membership expired, and um, you they're not going to come help you. What do you do? Okay, so say you are within reasonable walking distance of the metro. So you're going to use, you're going to take a bus, you're going to take a train. What is that? Community base. Now, what if you have a reduced fare card? What is that? Eligibility. So you use your reduced fare card to ride the metro. So you just integrated some supports there. Do you see you used an eligibility specific support and you leveraged it? to use a community-based support. So that right there is an integrated support. <laughs> as long as it's not on the weekend. So sometimes, just for fun, because I'm that geek, I like to see how many supports I can integrate to get somewhere. Um, and that's a little game that we play. So, morning, good job. All right, evening. So evening, what's something you do when you first get off work? Drive home, take the bus. Okay, this is redundant, but what is the bus? What is your car? You could say it's technology. You could say that because you owned a car, it was a personal strength or asset. Okay, then what? You work out at your gym. What is your gym? Community-based, okay? What if you um, have a reduced membership fee? What is that? It's an eligibility specific. All right, after you work out, good job. What do you do next? Okay. Buy groceries at the grocery store. What's that? Community base, I'm going to use my food stamp card. What's that? Eligibility. Um, go home and take a shower. After you take a shower, what do you do? Eat. Okay. How are you going to get your food? How are you going to eat? Okay, you're going to cook it. Now, if anybody is like me, I am an awful cook, and not, it, not one person in my house would want to taste what I had. So... I am going to have to have somebody help me cook. What is that support? It's 
the relationship. I'm going to have to rely on somebody to help us out or we're all going to starve. Um, so after we eat, um, what happens? What's next? Relax. What else? Clean. Did you say clean up? Family time. So you're going to spend time with your family. So where is that? Relationship. What if you don't live with your family and they're halfway across the country, but you need to see them? What support could you use? Skype, FaceTime, video chat. What's that? Technology. Thank you. Um, okay, after you talk to your family, then what? Go to bed. Okay. So let me give you one more... Um, one more scenario over here on this morning side. Um, say your phone or alarm clock is, your phone goes dead, your alarm clock's not plugged in. Um, and you have a pet that comes and wakes you up. What is that? It's a relationship. So it's important to think about when you're mapping out supports that somebody has to them, to think outside of the box. Think outside of the traditional, I would think, relationships. I'd, I'd always think a person. I wouldn't think that my relationship with my pet would be an asset to me in the morning that I could use. Or maybe it's an asset to me when I'm trying to solve a problem like trying to calm down and regulate emotions. Um, so it's important to, to think about that, too. Um, so... Mapping can be done that way, where you're thinking about a specific time period that you need to help solve what supports you have during that time period, maybe. Um, mapping can be done um, where you're just looking at what supports you have, period. So this is where I want you to take, um, take your second sheet, star sheet, and in the middle, I want you guys to write employment in Kansas. Now, if your table's made up of a specific region, you can write what region you're in. But what I want you, what I want to challenge you to do is we have a whole wall of these resources, these green eligibility specific. I think you guys have great, uh, greatly filled this in. This is. You guys got this in the bag, right? I want to challenge you guys as a table to write down some things in the other four areas that you can think of that are in your region that would help someone with employment. Now, when you're thinking about this, think about things like, how did you get your first job? Okay. Those will be resources that you're going to want to write down, okay? So we're going to take a few minutes and do this, and we're not going to report out on it. I want you to, to spend some time and talk about it, and then um, as the day goes on, if you want to write um, different resources that you think, um, think about, you can write in there, and we'll turn these in at the end of the day, and we can help build for Kansas a bank of non-eligibility specific resources. So what happens if a, if a program doesn't get funded? No problem, guys, we got four more. It might change a little how you're doing things, but you got four more to go back on. And so you guys will help start building that bank for Kansas of things that we can go back on. So let's just take a few minutes and talk about um, those resources and write those down, and then we're gonna do some problem solving with the STAR. Okay, you guys probably have some, some pretty good lists going. So um, make sure you leave these on your table when you're done so that we can put them all together and have one great big bank.
Um, the other thing is, is I'm sure we can set up a way for you to email resources as you get them um, that we can continue to add that um, because, you know, it kind of has to be a, a working uh, document as things come up. One thing that I want you to think about, just a little thought to plant in your head. Um, when you think about your own employment experience, how many of you got have had only one job in your entire life? Just one, okay? So I want you to think about when um, you're thinking about employment for somebody with a diagnosis, um, we, we tend to shift our thinking and we start thinking about, well, we got them a job, we're done, right? They have a job. But again, how many of you have had just one job your entire life? So it needs to be something that is always evolving, always changing, um, and to have that person's interests in mind and consideration. So this is a star um, that we have um, on our website that is focused on employment. And it's really hard to read. You're not expected to read all those, um, all those statements. But it is done around an employment goal. So what were all the resources for that person um, around their employment goal? There, um, we call these our star cheat sheets. There are stars on all the different domains on our website, and they're free to download and look at too. Um, and we tried to make them fairly uh, generic so that when you look at them, they're really good uh, conversation and thought starters. So you can also look at that as well. So I, um, you'll hear me talk a lot about that, having that green part of my star so full. And you'll hear me talk about, well, what happens if your program's not funded? And it, it seems like I'm just dogging on the eligibility supports bad um, all the time. Eligibility supports are not bad. They are an integral part of someone's good life. If we were to lose the green part of our star, our lives would change drastically but we would not be headed towards what we didn't want because we have those other parts of the star to um, fall back on. It's just the same as if all of your supports are in that relationship basket. So say you're helping somebody fill out a star and you notice that grandma picks up from school, grandma cooks dinner, grandma gets them to baseball, Grandma is the one that does all of that. What happens if grandma's not there? They're no longer on that trajectory and that path towards a good life. They're going towards the things that they don't want. So over-dependence on any one part of that star isn't healthy and doesn't lead us towards the good life. So that's important to remember as well. And for me, it was an aha moment. When I started filling, th filling out the star, I did not realize how much we had in the green and how little we had to fall back on, how we were not building relationships, how we were not building personal strengths and assets um, until I started looking at it and filling it out. Um, this is one way that the star was used to solve a problem. So um, we have several organizations that use the star, and they um, do something called Stump the Star. So for um, staff meetings, they take their problem and they um, put it in the middle of the star, and they problem solve around it and see if they can stump the star. And they've never um, been able to not come up with a solution. Um, so they use that that way in problem solving. With this one, you see uh, my friend Ben, his um, supports were really heavily in that eligibility specific. He didn't have hardly any supports in the community-based technology. He had eligibility in mom and dad. Um, over on the right-hand side um, is a schedule of his day. And can you see where all of those supports are? It's not very colorful, right? Remember I talked about the colorful life? It's not very colorful. Well, they had a capped waiver, um, 40 hours. And his mom um, wanted to work full time. 
and they live about 45 minute commute from where her job was. So she needed to be able to get back and forth from her job. So what is the first reaction, the first thought that we have when we look at that? We need more hours, right? Only she's on a capped waiver. So she can't have any more hours. So how do we solve that? So in the middle, we put Ben services and supports because that's the problem that we're trying to solve. So what they did is they sat down and they started mapping out his, um, his uh, supports that he had and the services. And they started seeing that, you know, um, two days a week, Ben volunteers at the fire department. Now, um, when Ben was originally in this first one, when he was volunteering at the fire department, he had a PCA with him, personal care assistant. And she would go with him to the firehouse and they would do what he needed to do. And, and after a little while, um, the fire chief called his mom and said, um, you know that PCA, does she have to come? We don't like her very much. And uh, his mom thought, but what if he has a seizure? And uh, the fire chief said, ma'am, we are EMTs. And uh, so Mama Bear stepped back a little and um, Ben started going to the firehouse by himself. So she was able to use um, those community supports that you see in the, in the blue. She was able to use those community supports, which then gave her more of her paid supports to be able to use in other places. She talked to um, Ben's twin brother, um, and they go, they like to go to WWE matches. So um, he supports Ben in that way. Um, ben had a difficult time staying home by himself. So they started um, increasing using uh, the technology, the iPad, enable to, to enable him um, to increase his time at home. So increase his personal strengths and assets. So one, they made services go further, the same amount of funding, but two, how much more colorful does this life look? It looks a lot more fun than it did before, I think. And those are just side by side. You can see the difference. Um, and we have also, with my, with, um, my two kids, we have been able to um, actually call up our Bureau of Special Healthcare Needs and say, please close our case. We don't need um, your in-home support anymore. And I'll tell you, um, as a mom who utilized all of those eligibility supports, I never thought I would see the day that I would call up a service coordinator and say, please close our case. We don't need your support anymore. Um, I don't think she ever thought that would happen either. Um, but it was something that it made me feel really good to be able to do that. So um, we talked about the different domain specific. This is a star that is around um, safety and security. So if you're thinking about um, alternatives to guardianship, um, there's, we call it our stoplight tool. Um, and that is at, I'm going to get the web address on moguardianship.org or .com, um, but a link to it is on our website too. Um, but that can help you determine whether um, guardianship is appropriate for someone. So you can map their services and supports. And this one actually, this star um, is broken down into categories within um, the different um, integrated support categories. So decision making, money management, it's addressing each of those and the resources that are that are available around that as well. So you can take it and, and break it down um, in, in many different ways. And I just wanted to show you a couple other examples. A lot of people think, um, you know, they're just using it for planning, for people's plans. Um, we have several organizations that use it for organizational planning. So um, this is one, um, LOQW used it for their organizational planning. Um, I have had, um, on some calls, I've had some people say, you know what, I used it in my church group. We did um, 
mapped out our supports um, for our church group. So um, there's a lot of different ways. And so you start thinking about, well, you can put employment in there, but maybe it's just transition that you wanna, um, you wanna address, just specific parts of that. So you can uh, map and problem solve around that. Um, we talk a lot about that. It's not about the tools. Um, and if you're in my breakout, you're gonna hear it a whole bunch more. It's not about the pretty pieces of paper that we have. Um, it's not about being able to download or get these. It's about the way that you're thinking. So here is one where they have used um, the framework and they didn't even use you know, our, our pretty graphics. This is um, her trajectory, um, her trajectory for transition. She put her vision for a good life. She's not using that piece of paper that has the trajectory and the vision on it. Um, she's just using the thinking, what she wants, what she doesn't want. Um, here is a star where they started planning around um, his future careers for Caleb. And they broke this star down for resources into those three categories again. Um, what resources does he have around decision making, money management, personal safety within um, each of those? You can also take the star and split it. So say one half of um, each of the categories, this is what you have now, this is what you need in the future. So you can do that too. There's a lot of ways. Um, we don't write very many instructions um, because there's so many different ways to use um, all of them. Here um, is what we call our, our cheat sheets. So they're in all the different domains. All of those are um, free to download online. So if you need to start thinking about something um, and you just don't know where to start, um, you can download that and it'll get you thinking. So um, this is Connor. Um, I did not know that um, his teacher was helping him with his IEP. We were going in for an IEP meeting. Um, and contrary to what everybody thinks, we don't, we, we use this some, um, but my school didn't latch on to it and say, okay, well, we're going to make all our IEPs this. Um, but the teacher started thinking about um, the framework that we were using. And so when we went into the IEP, um, she said, Connor has something to show you. So this is a real short clip. Um, of Connor using the framework and the thinking um, and how he started his IEP. Maybe. Whoops. About the <laughs> Why I have an IEP? I have a system. It's not the same for everyone just because I do make fully use my father and myself like good things. Sometimes I have problems with emotions. I get confused. Sometimes something irritates me, like when I don't want to pop the game, but then I get upset. And then I get angry. In class, sometimes I get distracted when I learn to learn. Sometimes I get confused with high school students. I need breaks sometimes. <laughs> I'm best at art, singing, science. I'm a good student. <laughs> I'm a good listener, video game, competitive, and risk taker. Not, I like to tell her not afraid to ask questions. And this one picture is like from Vincent Bond and the Starry Night by Vincent Bond. And why did you choose that picture? Because it was the most important word of the whole <laughs> I struggle with homework. Sometimes I don't like to do homework, how to calm down. But I feel like school has gotten better. I use my breathing. My teachers sit down and talk about it. In writing, I struggle with thought or my thoughts, trying to figure it out. Figure out. Trying to figure out the problem and solution. Sometimes I struggle with fitting in. Okay, tell her where to stop for a minute. She was listening. She, she made it. Okay. Sorry, I'm late. Connor presenting himself. These are my goals. <clears throat> Being more organized in my writing, using graphic organizers, making suggestions, understanding what others might be thinking or feeling, 
solving multi-step problems in math, math, and understanding uh, understanding informational packages the packages that I read. And this is my goal. I mean, the future to be creating video games as a job. Yeah. Thanks for coming. So you can see that he didn't use one charting life course graphic, right? But if you look in your daily life and employment um, booklets, that's the one that has um, the daily life and employment logo on it, um, on the left-hand side, up and down vertically. He used all parts. If you open that up, it shows the um, portfolio. He used all parts of that portfolio um, in his presentation. He told about himself. He told what he liked. He told the best ways to support him. He talked about his goals. So they used all of the framework without using the framework. So we get, pe or without using the um, graphics, we get pe um, people that'll say, well, you know what, my district or my organization, they won't use this. They, they won't put it in there. It's, it's your thinking, okay? Maybe you can't have the star in front of you, but you always have your fingers with you. Personal strengths and assets, relationship based, technology, community support, eligibility specific. You can always talk through all of those um, just by having your hands. So um, we're gonna do one more activity real quick and this really wasn't planned. Um, so I don't have slides for it. So um, we're gonna do the trajectory activity. If you were in my breakout, um, this is repeat, so don't give anything away, but um, we're going to go through it real quick because I feel like it's just very important. It's an important piece um, of the framework. So um, on your um, tables, you have trajectory worksheets. That's going to be the other 11 by 17. Um, on the right-hand side, it's going to say vision for a good life. On the left-hand side, it's going to have like a sideways triangle, your trajectory. So the first thing that I want you to do as a table is on that upper right-hand side, vision for a good life. Now, if you are a parent, do not think about your children. That's hard, right? If you are a professional, remove yourself from the disability world, okay? I want you to think about what is a good life for you as a person, okay? Not as a professional, not as a parent. What's a good life for you? So you guys are going to talk about that real quick. We're going to go through this quickly um, as a group and write down a couple things about your, your vision for a good life. It can be short-term next week. It can be long-term retirement and after, okay? Take a few minutes and write those things down. Okay, um, I'm going to take, go ahead and shout out about three or four things that were your vision for a good life. Your own place, what was back there? Drive a car. Family and friends, rewarding career. Okay, would everybody kind of agree that that was, that's what's on everybody's list, right? Family, friends, um, rewarding career. Uh, did anybody have financial stability, money? What about travel? Okay. Um, a retirement? Okay. So we all had pretty much the same things. Now the self-advocates that are in the room, what do you think that they wrote? Friends, family, get married. Now do you think that they wrote a good plan? A good, a good, um, they wanna make sure that they have 20 hours of OT? So something seems to switch in our minds. 
that as soon as we start talking about disability, we start talking about plans. And instead of writing and coming up with services and supports for people to help them have a good life, we write services and supports so they can have a good plan. And we need to, to start thinking about what is their vision of a good life. Now, if somebody would have asked me that four years ago, what's your vision of a good life? Yeah, silence, that's what I would have said, nothing. Because I didn't know. And for some families, if you look on your trajectory sheet right below vision for a good life, it has what I don't want. Now you ask a family or you ask an individual what they don't want, you think they're gonna come up with some answers? Pretty quickly, right? We all know what we don't want. So if you're struggling with that, what's a vision for a good life? You might have to start there. What don't we want? and then we can flip it around to figure out what we do want, okay? Now the other thing that I wanna go over is take your pen and in the middle of that trajectory, I want you to draw a line straight up and down. Now this is the fun part. We won't identify anyone. Think about ages 13 to 15, okay? What were you doing? 13 to 15. Quickly as a group, write down some of the things that you were doing between 13 and 15. Okay? Be honest. Okay, we're going to do five things now. So that we don't incriminate anyone, do not yell out your own answer unless you're just really proud of what you did. Um, let's do five things that you guys uh, put down. So, sports, work, frustrating mom and dad. Homework, school, sleeping. God. You guys were like all churchy, right? You did. Can I say that? Boys. No, so nobody, nobody was trying cigarettes. Nobody was, was trying alcohol. Nobody was sneaking out. You guys are so good. Nobody was making out with someone in the back seat of a car. Nobody was back talking. You guys are so good here. All right. So remember when I talked about typical life experiences. Somehow, when we switch and put on our disability hat, back talking becomes a reason to write a behavior plan. Um, sneaking out becomes a reason to write a behavior plan or change services. Um, when my son was like 10, 11, 12, he started talking back. He started throwing things. He would hit the wall. And that was my first thought was, oh my gosh, I am calling the service coordinator. We have got to write a behavior plan for this. And you know, after I started working with the framework, I got to thinking, you know what? Well, when I was 12, I got my mouth smacked with a spoon. And that is the God honest truth. My mama will be watching this. So I was sassy. I was doing that. So I need to reframe how I'm looking at those typical life experiences. Um, 
Connor was being teased at school. One of the ways that he reacted to that was to run down the hall and scream the F word. Typical, right? He's a 12-year-old boy. Now, maybe other 12-year-old boys know you don't do it when a teacher's watching, but it's typical. So it's important to be looking at that within the context of what's typical. And sometimes the chronologic, chronological age is not the same as the developmental age. So let's look at the developmental age. Maybe my eight-year-old is chewing his fingers, you know? But it's typical for where he's at developmentally. So let's address it like it's a typical behavior. Um, the other thing to think about when you think about your life experiences is what was happening when you were doing those things, when you were trying cigarettes. Did, you found out whether you liked them or not, right? When you were making out with somebody in the back seat, you figured out where your boundaries were. You figured out if you liked them or not. And it goes along with that dignity of risk slide that I talked about. You learn lessons while you're doing those things. But if you were never allowed the opportunity to have that typical life experience, how would you learn those lessons? A lot of times that freedom doesn't come for people with disabilities till way later in life. And then we say, well, gosh, he's 30 and he's doing that. Well, because he didn't have the opportunity to do that when he was 15 and learn the lesson. Okay? So you can go anywhere on that trajectory and do this exercise to think about where that person is at. Go down the trajectory at five. What are kids at five doing? Birthday parties, kindergarten, learning to share. Shapes, how are we helping a five-year-old with a diagnosis learn those life lessons? I wish my kid would have got smacked around in daycare a little bit, you know? You learn lessons. But at the time, I was so stuck in that safety and security domain. Remember those cocktail party questions? As a mom, I was so stuck in that safety and security domain that I didn't think about those life lessons that he needed to learn. And now I get to teach them to him at 14, and that's not as fun. Right? I can't, like, arm wrestle him like I could when he was five. Um, you can take it all the way up to 65. Maybe you're, I mean, through, through end of life, but maybe you're planning for somebody that is 65. Think about what typical life experiences they're having, their friends, their peers are having. Traveling, planning for retirement. Maybe, you know, maybe they like being a greeter at Walmart. Maybe they're wanting to do something that their peers are doing. So it's looking at it that way. And I told you I was the weird mom that was looking, you know, what are they wearing? What are they doing? That's because I want to know those, what those typical life experiences are. Thankfully, um, I mean, it has just been planned out from the beginning. Um, Shelly has uh, two boys that are very close in age to my kids. So when my child is running down the hall smacking other boys and getting in trouble and, you know, yelling the F word and taking the streetcar downtown, I go to her and I say, what are your kids doing? Her kids are typical. And she says, oh my gosh, the boys, they like lay all over each other and they hit each other. It's just like the weirdest thing ever, you know? And I say, okay. And I can relax. Now, does that um, behavior need to be addressed so they know appropriateness of setting? Yes. Do I need to make sure that there's some intermediate steps between Peyton just taking the streetcar? Yes. But those are typical life experiences. Nothing to freak out about, right? So I hope that um, I have given you guys some tools to go home with. Not just tools, but tools. Um, I do always get the question, how do I start this with someone? How do I do the life course on someone? Okay. First of all, you do it with them. Second of all, the best way to do life course is to do it. Take a portfolio 
and fill it out yourself. And see what difference it makes in your own life. And then doing it on someone is so easy because you get it, because it com becomes your way of thinking, it becomes your way of acting, it becomes your way of talking, it becomes your way of life. You look at everything within the scope of the trajectory, within the scope of your vision, within what are my resources. So that is where you start with this. Um, I'm gonna be around the rest of today and tomorrow. If you have any questions, go ahead and grab me. Um, there's also my emails up there and our websites on the bottom. All of these tools are free to download online. So um, there should never be any um, cost barrier that way. They're in black and white as well. And um, like I told my breakout, you can draw the trajectory on a dinner napkin. Um, it doesn't matter. It's using that thinking. So thank you very much for listening to me again. Um, and I hope you guys have the rest of the good day.